حقك هدي وارتاح تابر ومح من حقك بس بلاش العين لا 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 ما تسوى الدنيا بغيت حقك الحمد لله ما حد دنيا خمد يفقك هدي وارتاح تابر ومح من حقك بس بلاش Assalamu alaikum viewers. We are at the MJC I said event 2016, which is being hosted here at the Islamia Auditorium. There are students from different schools and different age groups that are participating in today's literature competition. The theme this year is the superheroes of Islam. This competition is a perfect platform to allow our youth to express their creative abilities and to learn about some of the greatest leaders of Islam. <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المسلين نبينا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ربي شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني أفكه وكولي Respected parents, teachers, our mashayikh, our judges and most importantly our superheroes and our VIPs for today, our participants Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The month or two that you've been practicing has seemed a long time. And so today we will reap the benefits and the fruits of your sacrifice and your time and your effort that you've put in. And the hours and hours you stood in front of the mirror rehearsing your poetry and your spoken word, mashallah. So I think we're going to start off by... Acknowledging all the effort that our young learners has put in and the teachers by giving them a round of applause. <laughs> At this point, we would also like to welcome the viewers of ITV who will be part of the inaugural Muslim Judicial Council, Islamic I Stedford for 2016. And wherever you are viewing this around the world or around South Africa, we hope that you will enjoy the talents that is being showcased by our young and honorable students today, inshallah. There's just a few house rules that I want to share with, with everybody. And firstly, I want to thank you for coming out and supporting your, your young learners and your children, because parent involvement is of absolute importance if you want to build successful foundations for our young children. Parent involvement is something that is lacking, unfortunately, and sadly in our communities, but it is one of the cornerstones of a successful community. So I want to thank all the parents who showed a keen interest in the development of their children. Alhamdulillah. May Allah reward our parents greatly. May Allah reward our parents with Janul Firdaus, insha'Allah. So there are a few ground rules that we want to go through. The first one, the organizer want to thank the, uh, the Academia Theatre for making the facilities available. It is a world-class facility for a world-class event. And there are some ground rules, and they made it very clear. And they said, please, no eating in the auditorium. No eating. We'll allow the judges to have a sip of water, but they must not miss. Kanala. <laughs> All right? Please, no eating in the auditorium. Uh, there the is a tuck shop outside. You're most welcome to go and uh, buy from the tuck shop. Bathrooms are behind us. Uh, so you can, we'll use only the one uh, exit, if someone can just close that door please. Uh, we'll only use the one entrance and exit on the side. Uh, we'd also like to minimize movement, especially when we are, when, when the young learners are presenting in front. So please minimize movement, minimize noise levels when they are presenting, because for some of them it's the first time, and it's quite daunting to, uh, sta uh, standing in front of these bright lights. So please try and make the the, the presentation as comfortable as possible. So, uh, we've briefed the learners early on. So we're going to have a group of four or five learners coming up to the stage and having a seat here. So we won't call one by one, just for time constraints and so on. Uh, they would then do the presentation. The first one would come off, the second one would go up to the, to the mic and you'll introduce him or herself and they'll start the presentation. When the presentations are done, please cheer as loud as you can, as you would like to encourage each and every one that has been involved in this. We'll ask that no movement, no movement happens during the presentations. So if you need to go to the bathroom, you need to go to the, 
the tuck shop to go and buy something, you are most welcome to do so, but only in the period where we have learners going off from the stage and coming onto stage, but not while they are presenting. Because you can see now, as people come in, it's quite distracting. And for the young ones who find them for the first time on stage, it can throw them totally off. So we would not want to disadvantage any person. So for those of you who, who is experiencing an stayed fit for the first time, it is an expression of our arts. And it's something that we're really looking forward to, inshallah. And so there are three categories that we are presenting today. It is the poetry, where our learners had to write poetry on various sahabi or various topics. And they'll present it today. It's the original pieces. The second category is the speech, where again they got a few topics to go and research. Some of them came up with their own topics, and they would then present these topics. Uh, and hopefully, it can be thought provoking for us to maybe change our perspective on certain things, inshallah. And the final category is the spoken word, where they will be presenting the, the halal rap. I think that's what they call it. So they'll be presenting the, the spoken word. And again, I'm really looking forward to what our youngsters has planned for us today, inshallah. Uh, one more thing before I introduce our judges <coughs> is that um, we, we had the section for, for grade 7 to 9 learners and then grade 10 to 12 learners. So unfortunately, or fortunately, our... our uh, you see, when someone distracts you, it's very difficult, Dr. Yusuf. <laughs> so, we had a category for grades 7 to 9 and 10 to 12. Unfortunately, we know our high school learners are very much engaged in exams at the moment. So, we only had three participants entering and all three of them are in grade 10. So, we combined the categories then. And this morning when I came here, I saw quite a few small ones. So, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, we'll all be competing in the same group. Um, under the three categories. Um, that's something we can obviously look forward at, at to, in the future, inshallah. So be that as it may, I will be keeping you company uh, throughout the day, inshallah. Uh, but for now, I'm going to just introduce our, our judging panel. So we've got a lead judge. Uh, she is, her voice is definitely known to all of us. And we hope that you can share a few words with us a little bit later in the program. She, is, she has been a presenter on Radio 786. She currently hosts a, a show on The Voice of the Cape, Glad Tidings to the Stranger. Uh, she's also a presenter on ITV and a lecturer at Tarun Naim. Uh, that is none other than Mu'alima Fatin Adams. She'll be our lead judge as our Rais and our president makes his way through. MashaAllah, we welcome... Sheikh Irfan Abrams, uh, to this inaugural I stayed for the Muslim Judicial Council, Islamic I stayed for 2016. Our second judge, she is part of the MJC Women's Forum. She is also a lecturer at Darun Naim and one of the key role players at the Darun Naim institution. That is Mu'alima Zarina Abdullah. Then also on our judging panel, we've got the one of the imams at the Minar al-Huda Masjid. Uh, he's also a teacher and educator and part of the MJC youth, uh, youth department. That is Imam Salih Isaacs. And our final judge, he is the coordinator for the MJC youth department. He is a doctor by profession, a alim by profession. And in our conversation a couple of weeks ago, <coughs> we spoke about being an alim and being a doctor, he said, I would rather live saving people's lives and rather focus on saving their souls. So that was quite profound for me, alhamdulillah. So we are privileged to have Dr. Yusuf Arif as one of our judges as well, and also one of the coordinators of this event. <clears throat> so with that said, we are going to, we just waited for Sheikh to walk in to get our first group of, of youngsters. And I want to remind you, uh, and if you've just joined in on ITV, you are at the inaugural Muslim Judicial Council, I stayed for, for 2016. So our first presenters, and I'll ask them to make their way to the stage, are from Douglas Road Primary School, Rahma Nyanwandi. 
representing Muslim Youth Incorporated, Yusuf Solomon, and from the Leadership College Observatory, Nafisa Akhidin. Please put your hands together for these three young students. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Rahma and I'm here to represent Douglas Road Primary School. My speech today will link on our youth, our superheroes. Our youth today is inspired by our heroes. I will not call them heroes because of the belief that I have towards them. I am proud to say that I will refer them as, I will refer them as superheroes, heroes that fought hard for what's right, believed in Islam and put their lives on the line for Islam. There were many superheroes who fought for Islam and who died too. Superheroes who accepted Islam and were tortured and even killed because of their exception for Allah and Islam. Wars and battles were fought. Blood was gushed. All this happened because because they submitted themselves to the one true God, Allah. In the Quran it is said, Verily remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest. This verse teaches us that we should remember Allah and also that Allah is not in need of us mankind, but we in need of Him. I was personally inspired by, with many superheroes particularly Bilal bin Rabah. The story of his life and how he died and his talks. While reading the book of Bilal bin Rabah, I discovered that he was the first African to embrace Islam. This inspired me. This inspired me as an African because it made his history part of my history. I learned about Bilal bin Rabah as I got to learn about Moibrad bin, bin Rabah, how Islam came, as well as how Islam came to Africa. I am proudly and gladly to represent a little bit that I know about Bilal bin Rabah to my fellow youth here today. Bilal bin Rabah was a slave who had no right to speak or to raise a voice. He was owned by Humaya, who was from a tribe called Quraysh. Bilal bin Abba was a slave who heard that there is a prophet, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that he is the last prophet to a true God, Allah, sent to all mankind. When Bilal heard, he immediately believed in Islam. But when Umayyah saw this, he immediately confronted Bilal by putting a heavy rock on his chest and placing him under a hot sun. He was whipped to death with stretched legs and stretched hands. Allahu Akbar. This is what our youth went through when they accepted Islam. So how can we complain? How can we complain about doing what is right? like making our five daily swalas. Like making our five daily swalas and the following, following the, Lord's, the laws of, of, the, of our Lord. When people like Bilal fought for what's right, believed and practiced our beautiful deen. This is our youth we had. People who fought for what's right, who, were de who had determination towards Islam. My Muslim mothers, fathers, and sisters, and brothers. How many of us sitting here today actually cry when we hear the words of Allah? How many of us, how many of us complain when we have to cover ourselves, complain and neglect our daily swalah, ignore the laws of Allah? in order to fit in, when these heroes fought to follow them. Our Muslim brothers and sisters in Palestine and in Syria, they are our heroes right now, 
who are now fighting, we should not forget that we were honored when we, when we were chosen to be part of this ummah, ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we were lucky to practice our deen freely. We should not take that for granted. My fellow Muslims, Allah gave us these heroes. Let's use them. What, I, what our youth lack in today is good character. And it is easy to change this. It's easy to change this. Let's just be kind, love and care for one another. Let's work hard and stand firm for our deen. If our minds are captive and judgment of one another, we will never see the beauty or the truth of anything. We can all be superheroes. We just need to look with, with it in ourselves, as we are all the same. I will leave you with a quote by the famous Rumi. Listen with the ears of tolerance. See through eyes of compassion. And speak with the language of love. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa my name is Yusuf Solomon. I am a member at um, My Inc. Muslim Youth Incorporated, and I'm a student at Tajdeed. Tajdeed is an institute where we memorize the Quran, learn to understand it, and strive every day to implement it. So, my spoken word today will be about Quran in my life. I chose to learn this book. It's a responsibility that I took. So you either do or do not, there is no trying. There will come certain times that you will end up crying. Make sure you push through all the difficulties that comes to you. If there is something you should remember, it's not one thing but two. It's to always make to uh, put in the effort and make sure you bite through. There's a war going on outside. No one is safe because verily your enemy is a shaitan. So take arm and sound the alarm because the devil being on your level since the day you were born. But remember, the bigger the sacrifice, the greater the reward. There will come certain times that you will have to break away from your family and friends and all the things that you do just for a time so that you can get your mind focusing straight so that when Shaitan comes around, you wouldn't have to fall for his bait. There will be some ups and downs, some smiles and some frowns, and the only way you can make it better is to put your forehead on the ground. So now, let's talk about the Quran, the way it lifts up your mind. It puts you on a level that you'll... So now, let's talk about the Qur'an, the way it lifts up every man, and earn your parents a crown to outshine the sun. This world is a test to see whose deeds are the best. But reading the Qur'an is just a, just a deed above the rest. Now, reading the Qur'an is a purification of your heart. Now, for each and every one of us, now, that's a good start. <coughs> Better than any words and more beautiful than any art, this Qur'an is a word that will illuminate any heart. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not just say in jest that you learns the Qur'an is definitely the best. So I'll hold on to this book until the day this earth is shook. And Allah will ask every good person and every, and every crook about every day in their lives and all of the years when nothing can help them, no amount of tears. They won't, not a single person will be smiling, there won't be a laugh. I wouldn't have to say a word because the Qur'an will speak on my behalf. So I encourage you to do the same. Focus on Qur'an. This life is not a game. We're not here just for the money and the fame. And yes, not everyone is the same, but you make your own choices and no one else can take their blame. So I will say it out to this crowd and anywhere else out loud that I'm a man of Quran and for that I am proud. Um, I'm Nafisa Akhirin and today I'll be rendering the piece Heroes by Buna Muhammad. I attend the Leadership College Observatory and I hope everyone enjoys this. My heroes never wore tights who appeared on cartoon channels. They had long beards and kept clothes above the ankles. No call in the street like beasts at night looking for thieves. My heroes fought their egos and narrated the hadith. 
And some of my heroes were once bad guys too. Baby killers, highway robbers, if only you know what they knew. Cause you gotta know a lie in order to recognize the truth. But what's the point of knowing truth if you can't back it up with proof? And to prove my heroes united from a single point of view, why else would they choose to go against what their fathers used to do unless they knew? Paradise was worth being abused, the best of views. If only you could choose to walk a mile in their shoes. Oh, what I wouldn't do to kick it back with Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Listen to him recite the Quran, so I had to go into a coup. Yeah, that'll be cool. But me and Hamza, we could get old school. Joke about the Jahiliya, silly things they used to do. And if I had my own crew, Salman al Farsi would have to be in it. And on a seeker of truth, may Allah bless his spirit. Have tea with Julay Bib, coffee with Anas ibn Malik. Anything to pick their brains and gain a better understanding. Could you imagine taking a class with Abdullah ibn Abbas, scholar by the age of 10, just a boy amongst the men? And if I had one friend, it'd have to be Abu Bakr as Siddiq, someone to hold you down and really represent. When Sumeya held her chin to her killer, did she think? that we would name our little girls after her to teach them strength? And forget these rappers, we got Hassan Ibn Thabit. Dude was sick with the flow, can't believe you didn't know that. Zaid was a slave who became one of praise. Lived the American dream and America was Cree. Umar bin Hattab was G, held it down for this dean, was a real superman, made the devils cross the street. And if I ever had beef, I would call up Holly bin Walid. He was a ride or die, homie, amongst the Salaf of Salihin. And if I close my eyes, man, I could almost see below amongst the cool morning breeze. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. For surely Salah is much better than sleep. Like Abu Sufyan after he embraced the deen. And on this earth, Talha was a walking shaheed. And Ja'far gave up his life for this almost victory. May Allah be pleased and grant them all the highest levels in heaven. And Uthman ibn Affan, who even the angels were shy in front of. Aisha was a genius, every word was like a thesis. Mother to all believers, pure like that of Isis. Khadija held the fetus of Fatima, who were the teachers of Hassan and Hussein, sons of Ali who were slain. Man, you gotta know these names, because these people paved the way. It's a shame you know more about them monkeys on BET. This is our history. All the sacrifices that were made for me gave to me a legacy that I could be proud to keep, said B. It was decreed that at Butter we were only like 300 deep, but with the angels on our side who could even compete. Although he was a man of peace who preached speech before the sword, he raged a war against error. The worship of fake lords came to restore the deen that Ibrahim laid before. Extreme in his need to feed mesquite and the poor. Yeah, he was hardcore with his face to the floor, off praying so long that his feet became sore. Oh, uh, yeah, he got down like that and told all the rich they should pay the zakah and make the salah and spread the salam and declare, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Was the difference between Jannah and Jahannam like the mailman just delivering a message? Who else do you know with the swagger that's blessed, the best and perfected, corrected the method, Medina state of mind coming straight out of Mecca? 
champions, companions, homeboys, but go getters did it bigger and better. Had followers before Twitter, the leader of leaders, a mirror to believers, enjoyed all the good and forbade all the evil. My heroes taught people that we are all equal. The best of examples outlined what was legal. Forever I'm grateful for all that he came for. May blessings and peace always reach to my mentor, my teacher, my brother, my hero, my prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's how it goes, so tell everyone you know that the party don't stop till the son of Mary come home. I'm pleased with my Lord and Islam as my deen. May we die by these words. Allahumma ameen. I think I had the best seat in the house because I was watching Shagir Fahd all the time. And for that five or six minutes, no one could wipe that smile off his face, mashallah. I think once again, give our three participants a huge round of applause as they make their way off the stage. <laughs> Sadly, a few of our, our learners could not make it. Three of our young boys were unable to attend today. They've got janazas. So we do miss them, and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the deceased Janat for the dose, inshallah. And also, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to play sabr in their hearts and make their task easy for them, inshallah. Our next category is poetry. And so we call on Nafisa Karlsa, Amina Adams, and Aisha Frisla. Please put your hands together for these participants. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Nafisa Koroza. I'm from Zobri Primary School and I will be doing a poem. We are going. We are going to Madrasa, Madrasa, Madrasa. We are going to Madrasa to learn about Allah. We will learn to make a zoo, make a zoo, make a zoo. We will learn to make a zoo so we can be pure for Allah. We will learn to press a la, press a la, press a la. We will learn to press a la so we can talk to Allah. We will learn to make a zoo, make a We will learn to press a la, press a la, press a la. We will learn to read Quran, read Quran, read Quran. We will learn to read Quran, so so we can to, so we can listen to Allah. We will learn to love Allah, love Allah, love Allah. We will learn to love Allah, so we can love us to Shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Amna Adams and I am from Tulabur Rahman. When the world was in darkness and mankind was lost, came a group of men who knew the cost of bringing truth to the people, no matter the price, object or steeple. From among them was a man who would forever be known by peasant, servant and head of throne. With heart of lion and power of steed, known to all as Khalid ibn al-Walid. With mouth. At first an enemy and later a friend, the path of truth he would never bend. With sword in his hand and love in his heart, from Rasulullah he would never part. He served his people and conquered his enemy. From Rome to Persia, greatness was his destiny. He lived a life of piety and honor, a man of such character, there will never be another. A warrior by day, a slave by night, always ready to stand and fight. For the cause of Allah was his constitution, and the sweet smell of Jannah was his destination. Feared by his enemy, both near and far, Abu Sulaiman, Khalid ibn Walid, ibn Mughira al-Magzumi, the sword of Allah. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما نمس إيشا فريس لا أتين مدرسة مدينة إن مشوس بلين أنا بيرندر نبوا ما بات إيشا بن أبو بكر رضي الله عنه إيشا بن أبو بكر هو شيء she was a lady of modesty a daughter of the best of the best. Abu Bakr was her father and a sign of list. Her husband is the honorable Prophet Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We honor and respect with all our hearts. She had no children as too she was a kid herself. We had love and jealousy for the Prophet's wife as well. Often she would ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how tight was the rope. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would reply, it is still the same. People want to be followed on Instagram and Twitter. Should we not be following the footsteps of the spectacular woman? I'm aunt of Amirul Mu'mineen, Aisha bin Abu Bakr radiallahu anha, a lady that narrated more than a thousand ahadiths. Should you and me not make an effort to follow this amazing woman's spectacularity? A woman with such a beautiful personality, a woman of dignity and integrity, a mother to all believers. The thing she achieved, we could only dream of. Her knowledge is worth more than any dollar. She was one of the best female scholars in the history of Islam. She was unique in every aspect. Aisha bin Abu Bakr radiallahu anha, the greatest scholar in eternity. It is a shame that teenagers of today haven't even heard of her. They are too busy with social media, social media in the West nowadays. Aisha was a genius and the Prophet's words was an inspiration. And all the Sahabas will be here to validate this. So should we as Muslim believers at least not try to emulate this? Shukran Kathir. <laughs> My name is Hamira Jackson. I um, attend um, the Leadership College of Observatory and I will be doing a speech on the world needs Islam. Peace. Islam is peace. The peace that lies within our brothers and sisters is the peace of Islam. That same peace, subhanAllah, not only helps but creates the character of our brothers and sisters. That peace we know, it gives models and ethics that helps us grow. You see, most people seem to think Islam is just a religion. Islam is not simply just a religion. Islam is a way of life. Our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, shows us a character, respect, modest, humble. Brothers and sisters, we should be living a respectful, modest, humble life, subhanAllah. Islam is there to keep peace, not for the holding of grudges, lying, cheating, or stealing. Islam is peace. My brothers and sisters, Islam also encourages love. Not just any love, but a love like no other. A love in which you would want for yourself what you would want for another. And that is Jannah. And with love comes care. And caring means helping. So always help one another. Because if every man sincerely helps one another, then who will need help? You see... Apart from peace, love, care, ahlaq, humanity, and all these amazing values, models, and ethics, Islam brings contentment to the heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Remember me, and surely I'll remember you. And who would not want to be remembered by his Lord, subhanAllah? So my brothers and sisters, Make dhikr, read your salah, and pay your zakah, for this all leads to Jannah. My brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, the world needs Islam. Shukran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Before we discuss the legacy of the Prophet وسلم, I think it is important to know about the physical features of the beloved Nabi Muhammad To know the physical features of the Prophet وسلم, it will give a person a deep appreciation of the legacy of the Prophet وسلم, The lead of all Prophets, the cream of creation, the intercession for us on the day of judgment. Now, let me give you a description of the Prophet ﷺ. Describe him to me, and Muslims, look at the description of your Rasul. And for some, this should be the first time you hear what your Prophet looked like. I show a man of striking appearance, radiant face, beautifully created. His belly wasn't platooning, nor was his head disproportionate and small. Proportionate and delicate, finely made, a specimen of a creation. And in his eyes there was a contrast. The dark was immensely dark, the white was excessively white, and his eyelashes were long, and in his voice was a natural echo, and his neck was elegantly long. His beard was full and thick. His eyebrows were arched, but they were not joined. It was separated. When he was silent, dignity covered him. And when he spoke, it was audible and clear, almost commanding and overtaking. From afar, the most striking and outstanding in appearance. And when he came near, the best of them and the most handsome of them in closeness. Such an exalted and sweet level of logic, like when he used to speak, it was so coherently logical, it was smooth and easy to understand. He was to the point, not excessive, nor too short. His logic, his utterances, his words were like jewels coming out of a necklace, calculated, polished one after the other, it would flow magically. He was medium in height. Your eye didn't have the strength to look up at him, nor was it tedious to look down at him. He was a comfortable sight to look at. He had friends, the people that were with him. They were working around him to try to serve and protect him. When he used to say something, they used to hearken to what he used to say. And when he commanded, they used to compete to fulfill the command. This is Muhammad Rasulullah. This is Muhammad Rasulullah. Anas ibn Malik says, he says, I came out one night, it was the full moon night. And I looked at the moon in a desert. I understand the moon is an awesome sight. It is smooth. It is radiant. It is clear. It is gentle compared to the scorching sun that we are used to. So he says, the moon is the epitome of beauty. So he says, I came out at the full moon night and I looked at the moon and I saw it. Beautiful, handsome. So I said, let me go see if the moon is more handsome or the prophet is more handsome. Let me go see if that is more beautiful or the prophet is more beautiful. So I went and I saw him standing afar. So I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon. And he says, Wallahi, he was more handsome than the moon and its entirety. That is just a look of your Rasul. Aisha radiallahu anha says, I was sewing with needle, my needle dropped in the dark, I couldn't find it. I said, Ya Rasul, I can't find it. He moved his face close, and I swear, part of the radiance of his face, I found my needle. And the Prophet وسلم, was mind-bogglingly handsome, but his handsomeness was covered with waqar and jalal and haiva. The Sahaba says, when we used to sit at his feet, two feelings conflicting would come on the heart. The first one, you wanted to look up at him. You wanted to behold the majesty of his face. But when you wanted to look up, shyness used to overtake you, so you used to look down. Amr ibn Ah says, I sat with him many times, but if you ask me to describe his face, I can't describe him. I wouldn't be able to look up at him. It's a lal and a ta'zim, and I couldn't look up at him. That's why he didn't have the prevalence that Yusuf alayhi salam had, because it was difficult to penetrate the O and the spend of the Rasul. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone. My name is Uzay Kanamaya and I attend Bridgeville Primary School and I will be doing a speech called The Raindrop. Today I was just sitting using my imagination. Now imagination is a powerful tool, a beautiful gift from the Almighty, Alhamdulillah. So anyway, I was imagining myself as a raindrop, the very first raindrop that came from the heavens. Now where did I originate from? I was a tiny drop of moisture inside a majestic cloud, subhanAllah. As I made my way down, down, forming part of a beautiful river, forming part of something so precious, so extraordinary, and without any doubt, no any fuss, acceptance was found in a river. I felt a sense of belonging and welcoming so overwhelming. As I stride, I ponder as to how beautiful and precious this dunya is, subhanAllah. It is as beautiful flowing around with this river as it was falling from the sky. I then taught myself to be brave and because of how inquisitive I was by nature, I decided to prolong my journey into the ocean, pioneering as I moved, becoming something even I as a raindrop conquered. Alhamdulillah. However, forming part of the ocean took courage and bravery. But that's what it takes. A true raindrop never breaks. It lives on and ceases any journey that forms part of the pieces of a picture glowing in glory, which defines the moral of the story. Everything created has a specific purpose. Shukram. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Kaltha Hendricks and I attend Madrasa to Madina in Mitchell's Plain and I'll be doing a speech on Inspired by the Mothers of Islam. The wives of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are called the Mothers of Islam. Hadija radiallahu anha was a very wealthy person. She contributed from her own wealth for Islam. She, Khadija radiallahu anha, was the first woman that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married. And she was the first mother of Islam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married her before prophethood when he was 25 years old, while she was 40 years old. She stayed, she stayed with him for, for 25 years and... Um, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did not marry another wife during Khadija Rayullah's lifetime. All of the offspring, offspring of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, are from Khadija عنها, except Ibrahim. السلام. Their sons' names are Qasim and Abdullah عنه, and their daughters' names are Rukaya, Um Kulthum, Fatima, and Zainab. When, when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sent as a prophet, Hadija anha, was the first ever to believe in the Prophet Muhammad She supported the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the, against the attitude of the people of his people who harmed him and belied him and were obstinate to his call. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to mention her very often and always talked about her. To the extent that Aisha and I said, I did not feel jealous of any of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu wives as much as I did of Hadija Anha. Because Muhammad Sallallahu used to mention her all the time. He used to cut he used to slaughter sheep and cut meat and send some to Hadija Anha's friends. So Rabin Zama Anha was married to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in Mecca before the migration after the death of Hadija radiallahu anha. Sada was 50, 50 years old and was a widow. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, married her in order to relieve her sorrows and to honor her. Sada radiallahu anha migrated to Medina and stayed there with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, until he died. She lived until the reign of the Caliphate of Umar ibn al-Hattab radiallahu anhu. Aisha bint Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anha was very knowledgeable and did not graduate from any university. She used to memorize a lot of hadiths and surahs of the Quran. 
Aisha Radhawana was born four or five years after the prophethood and she along with her sister Asma Radhawana and who and her embraced Islam when they were very young. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was married to Aisha Radhawana and her in Mecca before the migration but did not consummate the marriage until he was in Medina when she was nine years old. Aisha Radhawana was the only a um, virgin wife of the Prophet Muhammad Aisha Radhawana was the most beloved wife to the Prophet Muhammad as her father Abu Bakr as Siddiq Radhawana was the most beloved friend to him. When the Prophet Muhammad was ill, he took the permission of his other wife to receive medical treatment in the house of Aisha Radhawana, where he eventually died. After the death of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Aisha radiallahu anha was the first jurist in Islam. The senior companions used to ask her about difficult juristic cases. In addition to keep her deep knowledge of Islamic jurisprudence, prophetic narration was one of the most knowledgeable people in medicine and poetry. She died in Ramadan 58 AH, 6, June 677, when she was 66 years old. Hafsa bin Umar ibn al-Hattab was the daughter of Umar Farooq. She was an extremely religious lady and used to spend her time in prayer and fasting, an excellent writer and orator, an ardent follower of Islam. She was born five years before the mission of Muhammad وسلم, in a noble family. Hafsa radiallahu anha embraced Islam very early with her husband Hunayz ibn Hudayfa radiallahu anhu and they both migrated to Abyssinia, fleeing their homeland for the sake of their religion. After that they went to Medina. When Medina had began to spread, her husband participated in the Battle of Badr and died in the Battle of Uhud, leaving behind Hafsa radiallahu anha who was no longer than 20, 21 years old. After she fulfilled the term of her Ida, waiting period, Umar Radiallahu offered her in marriage to Uthman ibn Af'an and then Abu Bakr Radiallahu And neither of them responded to the offer. Umar Radiallahu went to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and complained to him about how both Uthman and Abu Bakr Radiallahu had turned down his offer of marrying and uh, his daughter Hafsa Radiallahu Hafsa Radhu loved to witness the conquest and expansion of Islam. As a way of honoring them and giving them a noble position, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them the honor of being the mothers of Islam. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Each and every contestant here today has showcased these special talents and has given us a greater insight on this, the lives of the Sahabas, alhamdulillah. From myself, Farah Sibda and the ITV crew in Cape Town, shukran for joining us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Thank you.